So hello, good morning, and thank you very much, Gerald, for the opening of this second edition of a DAU Deficiency Congress. So welcome, welcome to you all. And Gerald, as he was saying, well, we are over uh, 1,200 participants in this Congress, and we are professionals of nutrition, medicine, uh, professionals from academia, research, also the industry, the pharmaceutical and the food industry. So actually this shows that uh, DIO deficit is being consolidated as something else than a metabolic problem, as we will see during the day. Now in 2007, together with a group, two or three colleagues, uh, we founded our company and our goal was to promote research around the uh, possible, the potential link between migraine and food. Because up till then, there were some foods which were attributed some properties that may uh, entail migraine, but actually uh, this had no physiological foundation. So our goal was to find that physiological foundation. So our hypothesis was presented at the Institute Ramon y Cajal in Madrid, and we presented our hypothesis to doctors and to PhD students. And at that time, for the development of that research project, I was trying to find some partnerships with other research groups in the same area that may share the interest with our original idea. And one of the persons with whom we counted, and actually that person supported us since the very beginning, was Dr. Carmen Miral, who is uh, chair at the University of Barcelona, and she is a director in the Campus for Food. And she was already a reference um, then. She had uh, made her research on histamine and uh, she was an expert in histamine intolerance issues. So today we are lucky enough to have her uh, or count on her. And then some years later, we presented the conclusion of our first study, a relevant study uh, with uh, the participation of a neurologist who was a reference um, in the field of uh, headache and migraine. And at that time, we saw that there was a high prevalence of a very low DAO activity in patients suffering from migraine and migraine being diagnosed to them. So we were really focusing in the role of uh, diamine oxidase at that time. And then there was a study by the neurologist Joan Izquierdo and also Dr. Vidal that really insisted in the high prevalence of the lack of activity of DAO in migraine patients compared to a control group. And there was a study on the treatment of migraine with the use of uh, histamine supplements and sorry dio supplements and these results were presented in the congress of neurology that was celebrated in in vienna in austria and well we also saw some comorbidities and dio deficiency was not only related to migraine but also there were other symptoms such as muscle pain or digestive disorder fatigue hives and uh, there were therefore uh, many more symptoms and that year was very important as well because it was a year of a project led by the uh, Board of uh, Doctors in Barcelona, so a great association for professionals of medicine here in Spain. So actually, well, I have to confess that those findings, those results in the first years were really really touching. And I remember Dr. Vidal who used to say, Juanjo, science is moving forward, but it's very slow. So we will require many more studies, many more, much more evidence so that uh, these studies become consolidated and properly acknowledged by the scientific community. And she was totally right when she said so, because nowadays in 2022, there are more research groups 
around the world leading projects regarding the intolerance to histamine and uh, DAO deficit. And it is quite impressive to see the growth of publications and the increase of evidence. And this has been exponential in the last seven to 10 years. And actually, well, we keep trying to provide evidence. And last year in 2021, in the middle of the uh, pandemic, the company um, Healthcare was integrated in the British group for foods. And for me, our direct link with AB foods ingredients has allowed to promote research much, much more and to provide more scientific evidence. And we're going to see this today. So 15 years have gone by since that beginning, that adventurous beginning. And even though there's still quite a lot of uh, paths to cover, there are some signs that let us say that there's a high prevalence of DAO deficiency amongst the population. And now the scientific community talks about DAO deficiency with a certain normality. And uh, this DAO activity deficit is starting to be profiled as a possible marker for many symptoms and pathologies. So this may lead us to think that maybe in the future we will witness a change of paradigm when it comes to treatment of this deficiency. And today we're going to see that uh, during the many different presentations of the different studies that have taken place. So you will see the agenda for today and uh, there's going to be three round tables. We think that this is going to to uh, make it become much more dynamic and well we will have some individual presentations because they're very specific and they're focused on some fields of the industry and then there's also a forum that is conceived actually for patients for patients who have been diagnosed with this uh, DAO deficiency so the first round table will be moderated by Dr. Oriol Comas, who is a member of this research group, experts in amines and intolerance uh, to histamine. And he will moderate this table, but in the table, in the round table, there's this topic which is going to be uh, tackled. And uh, we're going to talk about DAO deficit and we're going to relate that to intestinal dysbiosis. And actually there's a lot of research in the previous years that talk about this dysbiosis. It's going to be very interesting. We will have the participation of the young Dr. Sonia Sanchez, as well as Dr. Yang Ra from Tromso University. Uh, Dr. Vincent Renaud, and uh, finally, Dr. Eva Ruiz, who will also tell us more about the genetics in the activity of DAO, which actually may be one of the main origins. Now, the second round table will be devoted to prevalence. And it's quite incredible, incredible because, well, when we talk about prevalence, this is a something tricky, something delicate. We have to be cautious when we talk about prevalence, but what we can see already is that in different studies regarding different pathologies, there is quite a high prevalence of DAO deficiency. And this allows us to formulate some hypotheses regarding the prevalence for the general population. And we hope to see that uh, with a study that will be presented at that round table. So we will see the prevalence in uh, children with ADHD or patients uh, with fibromyalgia or patients with um, sleep disorders. This will be presented by Dr. Antonio Esteve. And also there's a more ambitious study that will talk about prevalence. 
related to the genetics, genetics and the DAO deficiency in newborns. And um, this study comes from a hospital in Barcelona. And then Dr. Ponce as well will tell us about the prevalence of DAO deficiency for patients with uh, low urinary tract disorders. And the last round table, the third round table, will be devoted to clinical projects that are under progression. Uh, it will be moderated by Dr. Maria Tintore. And the first talk will be conducted by Dr. Cal Carmen Vidal, who has um, conducted a, a cross study with a very wide uh, N number, a wide sample of patients. Dr. Ramon Struck has participated in the same clinical study and he will tell us about uh, diamine oxidase and alcohol metabolism, which is going to be very interesting as well. Dr. Ismael San Mauro will Tell us about the findings of his study for the treatment of fibromyalgia with um, a supplementation of DAO. And Dr. Adriana Duelo will also let us know about the findings of uh, her study related to genetics. And finally, to end this roundtable, which is very complete, Dr. Fernando de Mora will present a protocol, an innovative protocol and uh, this will be a hypothesis to move forward in the uh, in the knowledge of the relationship between DAO deficiency and migraine. So also there are some presentations oriented to industry and uh, one of them is uh, about intellectual property and the need to protect you know all these findings from expert and research groups and this has to be anticipated even before starting any project and also well dr mariluz la torre will tell us about the future uh, because we are foreseeing the future and maybe you know it's all those foods which contain uh, which are low in histamine or or foods containing dao that will be uh, interesting to metabolize uh, this um, excess of insulin. And the closure of the Congress will also be very important. It will be by Dr. Izquierdo. And I think that this will be a kind of uh, closing the loop during the day because he was a pioneer 10 years ago in some of the clinical studies about Dow deficiency and migraine. And I think that it's quite motivating for him especially, that 10 years later, well, you can just uh, close the Congress, uh, Congress that encompasses uh, so much talent, a Congress that is, you know, that is um, uh, witnessed by so many people who are accredited to talk about the AO deficiency. I would like to remind you as well that after the closure, there's going to be a forum to give some clues to patients on dietary treatment for those patients who have already been diagnosed with a DAO deficiency. And I would also like to remind uh, participants that during the day, during the breaks or during any break they may take, they can visit the exhibition because this is also a symbol of what's going on. There are companies from many different countries, um, diagnosis labs, companies offering solutions and treatments for uh, DAO deficiency and uh, histamine intolerance. So this is something that was unconceivable a few years ago. So now you can perceive that this is becoming consolidated, this awareness about a DAO deficiency. So, well, I really wish you a very fruitful day and let's start with the first round table. And uh, this will be by Dr. Oriol Comas.